inside this beaker, at the moment, I have a strip of zinc metal. So inside the beaker here, a strip of zinc metal, something like so. I'm going to add to the beaker some 1.0 mol per decimeter cubed zinc sulfate solution. It doesn't really matter how much. I'm going to approximately half fill the beaker with the zinc sulfate solution. Now importantly, that zinc sulfate solution contains 1.0 moles per decimeter cubed of Zn2 plus ions O2. Now can you imagine zooming right down into the surface of that zinc metal? What happens at the moment is an equilibrium is established. In this beaker, nothing's entering, nothing's leave, leaving at the moment. So let's assume that there's no evaporation at the surface. Nothing's entering, nothing's leaving. So an equilibrium can be set up on the surface of that metal. And the equilibrium for that beaker looks something like this. Zn2 plus Aq ions plus 2e minus an equilibrium with Zn solid. So as with any of equilibrium, that's a dynamic process. So the forwards reaction is happening all of the time. The reverse reaction is happening all of the time. The forwards rate and the reverse rate are completely equal because this is a closed system. Now in this other beaker here, I've got some copper metal this time, some copper over there. And inside the beaker, I'm going to add one mole per decimeter cubed copper two sulfate solution. So I'll just again, about half a beaker full of that into there. And that copper two sulfate solution then has again 1.0 moles per decimeter cubed CUSO4. So copper two plus concentration is one mole per decimeter cubed. And we could imagine that a similar equilibrium is set up in that right hand side beaker. So this time Cu2 plus Aq gaining 2e minus in equilibrium with Cu solid. Each of these two beakers represents what we could call a half cell. So this equilibrium is a half cell. It's not connected in any way to this one. This equilibrium is a different half cell. So they are both existing completely independently at the moment. So far we've got two different half cells in isolation. The one on the left hand side, um, this Zn2 plus this 2 minus in equilibrium with Zn solid, this has got an E standard value of minus 0.76 volts. Minus 0.76 volts. And the one over here, the copper um, half cell, I'll just spin this beaker around, has got an E standard value of plus 0.34 volts. But in the electrochemical series, those are the two values assigned to each of those two half cells. Remember that each of the half cells at the moment is uh, an individual equilibrium system, so it's a closed system. But what I can do if I choose to break the closed system and complete the circuit is to exploit the difference in E standard between this one and this one and to create an electromotive force, an EMF. To measure the EMF of this cell, that's the difference between the E standard of this half cell and this half cell, I need the following apparatus. This is a high resistance voltmeter. A high resistance means low current flowing, so it basically stops the current from flowing to allow the potential difference to be measured. So between those two half cells, I'm putting a high resistance voltmeter like that. To attach that, just take a crocodile clip and attach it to there and pop that onto the voltmeter like so. And the same on the other side. So attach crocodile clip to the strip of copper, which can act as an electrode as well as a reactant because it's a piece of metal. Um, and we sit like this like that. We've still not got a complete circuit though. So the final thing that I would like to add to this is a salt bridge. Now a salt bridge is fairly straightforward. Um, this is an example of a salt bridge. It's just a piece of filter paper which has been soaking in potassium nitrate solution overnight. And I'm going to dip one end of it into one beaker and dip the other end of it into the other beaker. 
And importantly, this will allow ions to travel through it, but not electrons to travel through it. So it forces the electrons to travel through the external circuit here. And I can make a measurement. So the measurement on this voltmeter says 1.09 volts. So by adding here a salt bridge to complete the circuit, a salt bridge to allow ions to flow, I've measured a potential difference of plus 1.09 volts is the value. Now that's not bad at all when we consider that we've got two different half cells. One of those half cells, this one here, the most negative one, the one that would be the oxidation half cell, is minus 0.76 volts, and the oxidation half cell was plus 0.34 volts, that's the standard values. So we'd expect the difference between those two to be plus 1.10 volts. So an experimental value of plus 1.09 volts is really not bad for this experiment. To measure the EMF of different cells, like these ones, just swap the solution and swap the, the metal over and, and do exactly the same thing. Of course, life gets a bit more complicated if we're dealing with, um, say, different solutions. So we might need a platinum electrode or something like that. Or if we're dealing with gases similarly, we'd have to bubble through and use a platinum electrode. But this method can certainly be used um, in the experiment in your booklet. Uh, that's experiment A21, measuring the EMF of some electrical cells, electrochemical.